Hello, everybody. On this another edition of the Public Goods Podcast, we have, in my opinion, one of the most public goods of all time and successful case studies, um, Pizza Dow and Snacks, one of the stewards or uh, delivery people for these uh, great pizzas. And yeah, I think there is a lot to be learned if you don't know about Pizza Dow. They're Dow about pizza. And yeah, they, they not only throw global pizza parties around the world, but they're one of the only Web3 communities that consistently ship exactly what they promise, which is pizza. And they've never failed one time in any of my experiences around any event worldwide. So yeah, welcome Snacks uh, to the pod. How are you Thanks. doing? Thanks. And yeah, and my title within Pizza Out, along with some others, is Dread Pizza Roberts. Is what we. Yeah. Can, can, and can you give some? Can you give some uh, context on that name? Actually. Uh, so Dread Pirate Roberts, right, is uh, is actually what Ross Ulbricht went by, uh, the Silk Road guy, and uh, and you know it's the idea of I think it's the the. The way that Dread Pirate Roberts is set up, right in the uh, in the Princess Bride, is that it's this, uh, you know, this leader that can always be replaced within this organization. So the organization sort of lives on with the new Dread Pirate Roberts, and that's kind of the the idea of Dread Pizza Roberts, I guess, is that you know it's to be replaceable. Yeah, that is an amazing backstory. Free Ross Albright. Um, shout out to the one of the 100%. one of the earliest use cases of Web three, and I think a lot of our first introductions into the space. And I wanted to kind of give a little backstory before we go into the pizza, like DAO and um everything in terms of the evolution. Like, kind of how did you originally get into the space? Was it like inspired by uh you know uh the Dead Pirate, or was it? more like kind of like yeah well, what 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 green pilled you into the space so i was um spending a lot of time on the internet in like 2010 2011 and and just really deep in like tiny chat i was on twitter i was in like random old facebook groups i'm just spending a lot i had just dropped out of college and i was just like i was living in my buddy's grow house and just like a little depressed, honestly. And I heard about um, Lulsec had hacked Sony, if, if you remember. I don't know if people remember this, but they were just clowning on Sony publicly for how poor their security practices were. And they had ripped a bunch of emails and passwords out of them. And they're making funny videos. And they started accepting donations in Bitcoin. And I, I studied math. I, before you know, I left school, and so I, I looked at the white paper and I said, "Oh, a currency backed by math seems good. People agree on math." So I started buying, and every few months to a year, I felt like I would have another eureka moment. I'm like, "Oh shit, Bitcoin is really is going to do it. Like it's, uh, you know, there's a lot of value here just for you know having different kind of moments of clarity." And so I started organizing community around Bitcoin pretty early uh, in Philadelphia and a little bit in Portland before I left. I came, came back home. I'm from Philly. Uh, and actually started making T-shirts that uh, were like I sold for Bitcoin. In, in uh, one of them is a Silk Road shirt that actually, if you've seen the Silk Road documentary that um, Alex Winter made from Bill and Ted, uh, which is a great, great one. Uh, I think it's called Deep Web. Um, Amir Taki, who's like a, a Bitcoin core dev, kind of a, a wild guy. He uh, he fought with the Peshmerga and he's just been all over the world. But he is wearing um, my pirate printing company Silk Road shirt in that movie. Uh, so, so I was pretty early and then um, learned about NFTs through a co-organizer of my Bitcoin group in Philly. He took me to this, um, it turns out famous event, uh, on, in, um, January of 2018 in New York, where I saw Matt Hall, um, and, and John Pence from, uh, CryptoPunks. And I saw the Dada folks and Decentraland and Rare Pepe community and just was sort of pushed right into, uh, you know, the deep end of the NFT scene at the time. And, uh, went home, bought CryptoPunks, and just kind of like 
started working on a project that I never launched, a Tulip NFT, which we uh, maybe we'll launch it one day. We always say this is the spring, but it hasn't happened yet. So, um, you know, you don't want to launch something bad, not on the blockchain. Yeah, no, that's that's incredible. There's a couple of threads I want to pick on there, um, especially like there's the whole coordination that pizza out. But early on, I think the the essence of the the Web three before you, it was even called Web three, the crypto community before you, it was even called that, it was just Bitcoin, and a lot of that happened early at these meetups and from organizers there, and a lot of times with you know big you know billion dollar blockchains and now professional event organizers, it it takes way more capital to do something so simple but back in the day um it was way more lean way more just do it at a train station and bring some pizza so can you can you can you kind of outline what the culture was and how those early meetups uh, started it's hilarious you said train station because that is exactly where i hosted the philly meetups was at 30th street train station and it's funny how it came full circle because we would actually just push tables together outside the pizza hut in the train station um and it'd be like 30 people you know sometimes a little more sometimes a little less just exchanging information and, um you know and now we come full circle pizza house throwing these like we throw a 700 person pizza party in denver and like comparing that to you know a bunch of people pushing together tables in a public train station outside of pizza hut yeah that, we've definitely come a long way yeah, I mean, and and there's still meetups like that. It's it's. I think it's to the to the very to the very core. So is there like like how how did that original outreach happen? Are you doing stuff on like Reddit forums? Are you reaching to like the Bitcoin core devs? Or like what is what is the formation? Is there programming involved? Like, so that was mostly through Meetup. Meetup was pretty huge back then. I think it's still people still use it, but it's not as huge. I came back to Philly from Portland. I was already going to a bunch of meetups out there. Like there were just tons of interesting ones. I went to this uh, statistician meetup where I learned tons of interesting stuff. I went to, there were some Bitcoin meetups out in Portland. Um, so I just hooked up with the Bitcoin meetup and it, which was already going. And I became, I, you know, I joined the organizing team because I was just, you know, I, I was ready to educate and I was ready to show up and, and help plan. And, and I, you know, started bringing us to the train station it was just a really easy uh place to meet and yeah we we built a facebook page we built uh i think we had a twitter we we may have posted on bitcoin talk um but you know we we would just go out to all the different communities like did we post on reddit maybe um i don't remember but Meetup drove a ton because people would just go on Meetup and search cryptocurrency. They would search Bitcoin and we made sure we always, you know, we would do, it's really just consistency, right? We would have a, an event like at least every month and eventually people just, uh, the word gets out. And how, how would you describe like the culture of like, like the meetups and the ethos at, at this snapshot in history? Is it more like, like anarchist? Is it more like developer related? Is it people just wanting like to learn? Not so many devs, um, a couple devs, more, um, yeah, anarchist, libertarian, uh, tech nerds, uh, revolutionaries, people who, you know, people who wanted to see new systems uh, developed on Earth, you know, for, for coordination. So we were talking about DAOs, you know, at these early meetups. And we didn't, I don't think we fully understood that humans were the hands and feet of DAOs. And we thought about DAOs as these more autonomous entities that were even more like living as code. Uh, and maybe we'll get there, actually. Uh, but, you know, we would talk about how like, oh, it's a cell phone taxi. But, you know, in practice, um, we're, we're definitely not there. And, and where we are now, it's DAOs are very human. So like what like were there early attempts at you know DAOifying these meetups or even DAOifying organizations and like what did what did that look like? Could you repeat? There was a little lag spike. Yeah, like like were were there early attempts at like DAOifying um you know these meetups or any organizations at this early on like before the snapshots and the colonies and the the the, the Aragons and the tools that we have like today like what what did that even 
begin to look like on on Bitcoin? Like, you know, I was on the colored coins mailing list and people were talking about that stuff. And then when the ICOs started coming out, you know, in, in 2017, like people were talking about those. But in terms of like community organizing um, and treasury management, we were definitely not. Even if we had no treasury, what coordination there was, was within the team. I mean, I do think that in some ways, um, Internet. Uh, communities are a precursor to DAOs, maybe in a in a weird sense, or at least I think many of them maybe can be ported into the DAO ecosystem. Um, you know, certainly like admin controls and permissions um, and ownerships are they they vary across all the different platforms. Like whether you're on Meetup or Reddit or Facebook or now Warpcast or you know or Twitter. Um, I think that uh, control over admin keys is, is pretty important. Um, like another thing, I, I run a Facebook group in Philly, which has like 14,000 people in it these days. That's so based in South Philly. And it's the third iteration because two of them got uh, deleted or, or, you know, taken over because of like admin control problems. So maybe that's a bit of a rabbit hole, but I, I do think there's something to be done with DAOs and access control to um organizations yeah opsec and managing keys especially in these porous organizations are uh, utmost essential and like you know people stay at companies they're at like you know two years and it's really hard for especially a lot of these things that come out of passion to keep these people engaged and when there's money and treasuries involved that's one of the biggest fears of a lot of these uh crypto project so I, and you also mentioned color coins i don't want to i don't want to like go over that because that's that's some og stuff i think a lot of people in the audience will recognize we have ordinals nowadays but there was already coins and they're like there was pepes and all this before pepes on ethereum can you kind of outline what those were and how those uh, emerged color coin was, was a labeling system for um for Bitcoin, right? And and it was a way to like XCP actually used this um these ideas, right? That 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 both was counterparty that issued um the rare Pepe's. So it was, you know, it was the precursor to a lot of this stuff. And I think it's it was made easier with some um with some later additions to like I think Taproot is a thing that really made ordinals um feasible. And now they're pushing for the opcat change as well, right? Which which just makes deploying it easier. But th but this was the early strain of thought. Like, of course, we were thinking about you know how do we make anything on these blockchains? Like that was always, I think, the goal. Yeah. So what 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 kind of changed from the realization of color coins to the event in 2018 and going home and buying crypto punks on Ethereum? Like what? What was really enabled that kind of allowed a new class of assets? So I, I another leg like I heard uh, going home and buying CryptoPunks. So what changed for me though, like between colored coins and that? Um, I think it was just time, and it was the ecosystem developing and. This was pretty early. I mean, I was it was January of 2018, so CryptoPunks had only been out for uh, a few months. Like they launched in, I think, mid to late 2017. And they, I mean, and I bought them. You know, they were a hundred bucks each, like 0.1 to 0.13 ETH was what I was paying per punk. So that it was, it was the, like there was only there was CryptoKitties. And there, there were CryptoPunks. There were a bunch of like kind of crappy early NFTs that you know maybe weren't so cool. And then there was Dada and Decentraland, and you know that was it. That there were there were not so many projects out there. So and Rare Pepe's right. So yeah, I and then, yeah, and then and then so 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 when when was kind of the the gap between this and, and, and pizza DAO, like what actually happened? Was this a direct, Hey, we like need, we've already been doing this pizza thing. We need 
we'll do NFTs on it? Like, what was, what was kind of the Eureka moment? So, I I hung out in the punk community for years, right, on Discord. Um, I'm, I'm a mod to, actually today, since like, you know, it's changed a lot over the years. And um, the NFT scene didn't really pop off until 2020, like late 2020. And I, I know there's a lot of history there that people don't really know that happened pretty quickly, you know, month after month that I think is responsible for punks raising in price. And then the whole ecosystem that kind of followed um, and clubhouse was huge as a part of this, I think for onboarding retail and education. I was, I was pretty early to that. I joined clubhouse in, well, I was actually kind of late to clubhouse, uh, but I was early to the NFT scene on clubhouse and helped, I think helped really, Took it off because I had a, a lot of knowledge from having been in the ecosystem so long, and there was just not that much stuff to know, and I knew it. So I just shared my knowledge on Clubhouse from I think I joined in November 2020, and then was I was just building community there, and so that was actually the seed of the Pizza Dow community. It really came from that Clubhouse NFT community. So that yeah, was that's, yeah. that's that's also a very historic piece of time, especially with COVID. Everyone's at home. Everyone's trying to get these exclusive invites to Clubhouse. I know people spend spending days actually building communities and curating there. And I've heard a lot of OG um, communities come out of there, like uh, people talking like Seed Club and things like that. Uh, were really like bred from the whole Clubhouse era. So. How, what 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 was that kind of coordination of all right we're gonna we're gonna do a pizza out like what is like what was the origin was it okay let's start doing meetups let's drop like a rare pepe's nft like how how was that uh, kind of coordinated so first i was talking to people a lot about um building blockchain accounting systems for small business so they could be tokenized and owned locally because i you know from the beginning um for me cryptocurrency is about reinventing economic systems for for the you know the future that we want and um that's about strong communities which i think is about locking wealth in communities and also about properly valuing the local commerce which i think our system doesn't do a perfect job of because banks um banks don't have the time or inclin or inclination necessarily right to spend, to look at a small business and understand what its value is to the community because many of those people working there don't even live in the in the community the small business is serving so maybe moving that finance towards the neighborhood is is the you know is a good path so that was where i was coming from and people would just glaze over about that like it's just a lot uh whereas um Packaging that within a pizza box may, you know, is a lot more uh, tractable for for people. So, so that was sort of how that developed for me. Um, and, and I was already running a lot of rooms on there. So one day in one of my rooms, um, you know, someone brought the like this woman Monica brought up the idea of of making an NFT that was like the hash masks. I was like, oh, you know, we'll make, you know, rare pizzas and we'll have an individual artist for every topping. And so we made this Google sheet that was just open edit. And we said, hey, have that at Artists of Clubhouse. And if the Artists of Clubhouse sign up for a topping and we had 100 people sign up in the first, you know, few days uh, and open a Discord, which grew to hundreds of members really quickly. And then we increased our toppings. You know, we allowed 200, and then we we settled on letting 314 uh, artists in. And this happened um, February 18th. I was like, I started talking about Pizza Dow a lot in January of 2021, but uh, the Discord launched in February, February 18th. We had an NFT. Actually, we launched on March 15th, and the initial sale raised like a bit over 300 ETH. And then two months later, we threw our first global pizza party. So it was super fast. Yeah, that's incredible. Can you can you kind of give a lay of the land of what was happening in the NFT ecosystem? Was this, was like Solana already NFT poppings? Was this right before then? Was 
Binance Smart Chain out were people doing like pancake swap and apes like okay okay that's that's where we were so it was we were right after hash masks uh our, we released our nft before board apes um and there were there were not that many projects yet you know punks were really um becoming noticed and understood uh, especially because everyone was wearing their punk on twitter and on clubhouse and then um you know so we launched right before the kind of like pfp season really hit and t- took hold after the board apes um binance punks had just uh minted and i remember all the crypto punks were complaining and i was telling them y'all like the whole point is that we have provenance who cares um so actually if illegalpunks.com is a website where i've archived some of the memes they were making which i thought were pretty funny um so yeah so we we were just right at the beginning of that and then it was this crazy rush to onboard um pizzerias for may 22nd and to distribute the money and get everyone their stickers and their brand packages and like and really spread the word and and it, it, yeah we ended up spending i think we we deployed like three hundred thousand dollars on may 22nd uh 2021 directly to pizzerias wow and so so that was the the initial launch was the nft sale and then actual global pizza day can can you go over a little bit because we have we have global pizza day coming up Again, you know, May 20, 20, 22nd, it's, it's, it's March now. And so, so what, is, what is Global Pizza Day? What's kind of the significance behind that date? So Bitcoin Pizza Day is uh, a celebration of the first Bitcoin exchange for real world good, which was pizza. This guy, Laszlo Hanyich, he, he traded 10,000 Bitcoin for two pizzas. Uh, and this was May 22nd, 2010. So, you know, very early. It actually took him four days to <laughs> to get the pizzas. He posted on May 18th, and then this guy Jeremy Sturdivant is his name. He ended up uh, buying the pizzas from Papa John's for he called in the order on his behalf. So we celebrate that because you know that is the first time that we really exchanged anyone exchanged cryptocurrency for something uh, quote unquote useful or you know or re- in the real world. I, I joke that it's like when the metaverse reached out and touched the the physical world, and so we celebrate that. Uh, because it's, you know, what's global? The internet's global. Um, cryptocurrency, Bitcoin is global, and pizza is global. So these are three easy things uh, to connect the world around. And they're, and they're also, like, hard to disagree with, I think. You know, the, the internet is here. It, we, I think we like it. Uh, pizza is good. And, uh, and, and cryptocurrency is here to stay. So these are three easy things that I think the whole world can come together and throw a pizza around. I mean, it's a pizza party around. Yeah. Throw a pizza. Yeah. And, and, and so can you kind of talk about that coordination? Like what, what was the initial outreach for like, like I, I remember getting involved. We, we did, we did a pizza day in Africa and it was like, it was kind of incredible to see different nodes pop up and there just be a system for reusing the branding, how to reach out to community partners, like discord onboarding, um, and then really coordinating around having like hundreds of cities throw a pizza party. So like, what was that logistic wise, like early on look like? So the first video? year, the first year it was COVID. So we did a totally different, we went directly to pizzerias because we couldn't host events in most places, but like people wouldn't work in a gather. So we, um, we actually called pizzerias and we said, Hey, I'd like, we'd like to buy $500 a pizza. Um, but, uh, we actually want you to just give it away and we're going to tip $125 on top for the trouble uh, because we know it's not easy to just go out and give pizza away. But, um, you know, and they were like, what? And, and they would transfer us to the manager and we would convince them and show them, the, you know, tell them the story and then send them the money ultimately and, and the, the graphics. And, you know, they gave away pizza. and they had fun. So, so the first year was really focused. It was almost like an airdrop to uh, local pizzerias of like, you know, $300,000 in pizza that they got to give away. Um, we also bought $55,000 worth of slice codes, which I think were 20 or $25 at a time. And just, 
just distributed them on like crazy, like online, just sent them everywhere. Um, FaZe Clan gave a ton of them out on Twitch streams. Uh, we gave a ton out to Twitter. We gave them to celebrities. Like it was hilarious. Like um, we bought, if you remember, Anthony Pompliano launched Bitcoin, his Bitcoin pizza brand that year. And there were 10,000 Bitcoin pizzas. We actually purchased 10% of the supply and miracled them to the to the, uh, the people who ordered them. Like they got their pizza for free from Pizza Dow. So that was the first year. Um, the second year, we realized that we could actually throw events. So we we sort of transitioned um, and and focused. We still did a lot of pizzeria support, but we focused more on bringing people together. And that's the direction that it's taken since. Um, uh, you know, the third year we, we just did, we had 116 cities. I think the year before we, we probably did like 60, you know, somewhere between 60 and 80 and, you know, and now we're looking at 150. So how we coordinate that is spreadsheets and it's like, it's Google docs, it's telegram chats and it's, it's Figma for, for, um, assets and it's Twitter for, for some announcements to the global community. It's a website to um, direct people, you know, global pizza party X, Y, Z has a, a list of all the cities so people can kind of funnel into their local. And then we used Eventbrite to post the events or some people used Luma. Um, and that was kind of the stack, like organizationally. Um, you know, we used Mercury uh, to do our, you know, our banking, which is, has been really useful because we can mint debit cards. Um, so that was really great. Uh, people, you know, we, we could give a local host their own debit card. I just send them a screenshot of a virtual card that we minted that had a limit on it of what we expected them to spend. Um, but like, really, it kind of, it came back to a ton of spreadsheets and Telegram chats, fundamentally. Yeah, and, and and I I remember even on the spreadsheets, people kind of requesting funds, and they're like there being fiat options, there being options on Polygon and X Dai. There was it was really accommodating to like whatever you need to get this pizza, pizza Dow got you. Um, and that yeah, that's that's incredible. So with, how how does that work in terms of like people always ask me, and and the first time I heard about pizza Dow was I ended up being at a pizza Dow party in Miami, I think early. Basel a couple of years ago. So this may have been like before the second global pizza day. Um and then I'm I was like, what? Like there's a pizza there's pizza now that gives away pizza? Like what? That's crypto is awesome. Like web three is awesome. And um uh, yeah, and then one of the main questions is like, how does Pizza Dow still have money for all this pizza? Yeah. So the answer is we sold our NFT. It's actually still for sale. So People are still minting it every now and then. Rarepizzas.com slash mint. I think one day it'll mint out. People will realize that we're a historic organization, uh, you know, a, a DAO that has has really delivered a lot of pizza. So that's how we built our initial treasury. And I and it, we continue to get some sales. But um, we've actually really transitioned. We get a ton of sponsorship and grant support these days because we're bringing out, we're doing two events a month almost now at conferences and we're bringing out routinely you know 150 300 in denver 700 you know huge amounts of people and we're pretty good we're pretty good at throwing pizza parties like i say like we we've we've been throwing a lot we have thrown hundreds of pizza parties as a global community at this point so um yeah we our pizza parties are pretty much break even you know it's not like we're um and it's a lot and it's a lot of volunteers you know we're, we're it's a lot of volunteer effort we're doing our best to, to start to pay our community and um, you can even check mafia.rarepizzas.com has like our, our four um, payment ethics that we've done so far. Um, we've been starting to build in some of our costs like on our events, but we're really breaking even, you know, these, these events are not um, making big money for the DAO, but we, I mean, we wouldn't do it any other way. Like these events have been great. I think I think we're doing a lot for the community. We're doing a lot for for Pizza Dow. You know, everybody knows us now, having from all these events we've thrown. It's been it's been quite a transition over the years from like, oh wow, Pizza Dow. Like what? That's silly. That sounds fun. What's that? To hey, oh Pizza Dow. Like you you fed me pizza. Oh sorry, bad podcast etiquette. Um, you you fed me pizza in like. You know, in Miami, you in uh, in Dubai, and who knows, you know, and uh, that's really rewarding. So.
No, it's been it's been a, a, a beautiful a beautiful thing. I've seen you everywhere. You know, I I've, I've been working in near for a long time. We, like we we we've been supporting in terms of pizza parties. I think we did one most recently in Lisbon. I saw I saw you on the street randomly in Singapore on like a, another pizza party. I'm like what like snacks? Like it wasn't even like near any venue space. I was like what? We got a pizza party there. I I remember seeing uh in Vietnam and and so where like where have your been your most memorable like pizza down moments in the world and like like where where have where has the pizza taken you oh man for me i mean traveling like we did a little there were a ton of events in asia over in southeast asia right last year so that trip was really amazing just like when i our Korean community has been huge from the very beginning. Actually, like I, I think almost 10% of the pizza toppings on our NFT were made by Korean artists because um, one of our really early members, Waji, is um, he just knows everybody over there and, and was super early to NFTs. And he's like a a very successful rapper. He's a, he's a great dude. Um, and so going there and getting to meet our community there and then you know, and then hitting Singapore um, and just starting to meet the Pizza Dow hosts from all over the world. Like I would just be going around and, oh, like, oh, my God, you know, you hosted the event in in Indonesia or, you know, or and um, like getting to put like a hug even on like this this telegram um, name that I've been interacting with was. I mean, incredible. Uh, So just, so that's like the most rewarding thing for me is being at an event somewhere in the world and meeting a host from one, you know, from two hosts from different parts of the world and getting to introduce them to each other. Be like, oh, Pizza Mafia Frankfurt, you know, meet Pizza Mafia Maui, (laughs) you know, and like that. Yeah, and then and then they can tell each other right their pizza mafia name, you know, which immediately they know the other person's favorite topping and like their their mafia movie. Have you gotten a pizza now a pizza mafia name? No, I don't. I don't have the pizza mafia name. No. What's your favorite pizza topping? Uh, I like I like mushroom. Okay, nice. And what's your favorite mafia movie? Uh, I like. It's been it's been a while, honestly. I used to watch, consume a lot of content, but uh, um. Yeah, I don't I don't really I don't really remember. Maybe maybe uh Scarface. Okay, Scarface uh, is a good choice. So so then I think we so we have a mushroom Montana, but I don't think oh and we have a mushroom Pacino, but I don't think we have a Manolo mushroom. Is is that me? Yeah. Did, did I just... Yeah. Okay, okay. I gotta get back on Discord. I'm just now getting back on Discord. I've completely converted to telegram but i need to i need to claim claim the name yeah we're using both um we you know you could also become a junior sometimes we uh (laughs) you could be like mushroom pacino jr which is kind of funny but manolo mushroom is pretty sick name yeah double m uh but but yeah speaking on the thread of like just like international expansion and going around like the world I mean, it's incredible. Like, just as a volunteer effort alone, I think international NGOs should be studying Pizza Dow to see how people coordinate and how people are truly passionate about the mission. Um, and um, yeah, so how like how does that coordination work? And what are some unexpected like places where pizza parties have been thrown that people that people would be surprised that this is this is happening? So yeah, br- it's. Bringing people together is about finding – you just need one person who is passionate about throwing the party, and you need the right – like, I think our number, which we say, look, we have $625 towards you buying pizza and throwing a pizza party. I think it's a great number where it's like that is enough money to have a pretty a pretty decent pizza party. Like, you can get a bunch of pizza for that. So it's, so it's an offer they can't refuse, I think, a little bit, right? It's like, hey – here's $625, go throw a pizza party. And then we throw in a bunch of marketing material and a deck and do all, you know, we have all the design, all the hard parts are sort of like set. We have a template for the event. You know, we, we make it, we really put you on rails to have a solid event. 
and we give you an opportunity to grow your organization, right? Because like most of the people who end up coordinating our local events are already local community leaders. That's the point. We, we The first thing I ask my local contact is, hey, who are the local blockchain community leaders in your in, in your city? Let's get them all in a room. Then let's say, where should we throw this event? Then let's say, are there any companies that we have relationships with that might want to have a presence at the event that could help us go a little bigger? You know, maybe $625 is not going to buy enough pizza for how many people are going to come. Maybe we want to have drinks for them. Maybe we want to have entertainment. Maybe we want to go for a venue. Who knows, right? So we give people all the tools to do that, and it grows their local scene when we give them the tools like our partner organizations get to scale especially like the locals get to if they bring on sponsors then guess what those sponsors can help them throw blockchain community events all year and they can even and those those companies can even program those community events with the you know whatever they want devs to be working on with their API like they can start to build those relationships with which I think it's super important for actually you know building things in, in the ecosystem. So like I was talking to, you know, college now was telling me he grew his, um, his university base from 41 to like 84, just from the kind of pizza Dow onboarding um, message. So it's about, I think it's just about incentives and, and it's, and it's really simple that people want to get together. They want to build community. They want to connect around these ideas and technologies and we just give them the rails and we and we and we make it as easy as possible and then I mean it's just so easy to be a pizza DAO compared to a more abstract DAO. Like that we can say, look, we're pizza DAO and we throw a global pizza party and we throw pizza parties. It's hard to argue with. And it's easy Not, to get me out. It it really it really is a beautiful experience, especially doing that in in Morocco, where honestly, like crypto is low key outlawed, and having a scene, um, and 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 even educating is is very under the wraps. And coming, especially like I traveled everywhere where crypto is hot, and it's popping, and there's community, and having being in a place that's dope but has no real community, it was it's pretty awesome to bring people together. And I don't I I. I see like Pizza Dow as one of the onboarding mechanisms for bringing up regional communities without shilling a blockchain or getting too technical and kind of showing that real use case. So in terms of like where, like, like, so where, where are kind of the, the, the most far off cities or villages that you guys got into and then where you try to uh, target this upcoming uh, pizza day? So um, we have some amazing photos from Easter Island from the first year of, you know, pe- people with our brand with the pizza, like in front of the stone heads um, or Rapa Nui, I guess is how a lot of people know it. And um, <laughs> like, actually we in Latam, I think pizza Dow, I think the blockchain community as a whole has a lot of opportunity in Latam. I think it's a region that has um, unstable currencies, unstable governments. Everybody speaks Spanish. A lot of Americans speak Spanish. I speak Spanish. Like a lot of people in Pizza Dow speak Spanish. And so, and our coordinator in um, Ruben from Chile is just, I mean, he's he's phenomenal at bringing people together. He's been crushing it. Um, he, so, he also brought us to the top of a volcano. Isolate. Like, there's a guy who makes pizza on a volcano. So, the pizza party was on the volcano. We, I mean, in South Africa, we have this footage of kids in Lesotho, many of whom are having like their first pizza. That was really amazing. We were working on getting to Antarctica every year. We joke like that we're going to get, there's this Chilean research facility in Antarctica and like we're going to get there. We try, we've been trying to get into space also because Cyanide Proctor was like a friend of ours pretty early. Um, she had an NFT called the, uh, the Muttnecks, I think they were called. And, um, so, but, you know, I mean, I can tell you the smallest pizza party last year was three people in Billings, Montana, and, like, one of them had to drive quite a ways. Um, the biggest was 307 in uh, in Argentina and in Buenos Aires. So, like, um, 
we're, I mean, this year we're really starting to dig into like we have, you know, five cities in India. I'm working to have more. Like I think we have five or six signed up for China. So you ask me, yeah, where are we trying to go? We're really focused on um, the Middle East. We're focused on Africa. We're focused on Asia. We we think we can really grow our presence there because these are. I mean, it's a huge. You know, Americans like we don't know beyond the first five cities in China, but that's missing, you know, it's missing a billion people right, that are in these other cities. It's a, it's a huge place. So, um, and they have pizza in, in all of these cities. So, so we're really focused. I mean, I'm going to pull up, um, actually we have a chart. If you go to parties.pizza.xyz, anyone can actually do this. And, and that's our, our big master, you know, our, spreadsheet of all of the events and if we look at the chart like yeah so we had seven cities in in the middle east signed up we have 12 in africa right i want to double those numbers we have 26 in asia i think we could double that number we you know 52 in north america like we're doing pretty well 16 in south america 13 in central america we could get we could onboard some more 36 in europe pretty solid but but you know eastern europe we could we could do more um and, and to anyone who's listening, like if you're in a place that we don't have a party, the offer is real. We have six hundred twenty five dollars for you to spend on pizza on May 22nd to bring together your local community around Bitcoin Pizza Day. Like we, we are ready and willing. Just join our discord, tag us on Twitter, pizza underscore down uh, global pizza party dot X, Y, Z. Yeah, and it's, it's an amazing like offer, especially like. Pizzas are so cheap everywhere else, like 600 like even if like we're throwing a party of 50 people, we're going to one venue, giving everyone pizza, going to another, even like could not run out of pizza. And I mean, there, there are also cultures associated with a pizza party. Let's not kind of go over that. There's the whole stacking of the pizzas. Can you kind of explain like there's a pizza album, music to play, that's all pizza related. How did that come around, about? There's like teenage ninja turtles that are doing kickflips over pizza boxes so like what is what how did all this pizza folklore kind of uh start around and, and the culture and the art uh, around this everything has its own origin story so like why do we have ninja turtles it's actually because um in the early days we were planning for our, our new york party and we talked to andrew wang about it if you remember andrew wang who He's a singer, I think. Uh, he was like doing a lot, and he was like, "How do we make this party more crazy? Like, we gotta make." And we said, "Ah, oh, well, we'll hire Ninja Turtles." And, and so, you know, it's eight hundred forty dollars to hire four Ninja Turtles for an hour, and we do. We, it's really worth it. It's there. It's amazing. It's hilarious. So we do that. Um, why do we stack pizza boxes in our? We we threw this party at the Lambo dealership in New York, which was just a this hilarious party we put like a pizza delivery uh topper on on the lambo and um and one of the pizza now members asked me during the party like what do i what do we do with the boxes and i was like dude we throw them out like what are you thinking and then i thought to myself for a second i was like you're a genius you know we're gonna stack the boxes and so ever since that event um actually uh, which was at nft nyc 2023 we have started to stack the boxes and it's it's great because nobody does that for like, I mean, we, we get to, um, you don't need anything to rep pizza Dow except a bunch of pizza boxes. Like it's, you know, it's such a cheap kind of symbol of the Dow to make a stack of pizza boxes and the volume. And we're in a unique position. Like, what do we have? A lot of empty pizza boxes. Like we're eating a lot of pizza. So, um, that's been hilarious. Like I was watching the global zoom and Vienna and Berlin were having their party at the same time and looking at each other on the zoom and competing to have a higher stack of boxes. Like literally you have people in Berlin going to pick up more pizza because they need their stack to be higher than the one in Vienna. It was hilarious. Um, yeah, we, we had actual <laughs> ceiling limits. Like we, we already had hit the ceiling and we had to like, like actually like start a new one we were in like a low gamer studio uh but yeah like what um 
I, I see a lot of. I mean, we didn't we didn't mention the the, the pizza dalbum, or do you call it a dalbum? No. So well, so we have a we have a community mixtape which you can everyone can check out. It's at mixtape.pizzadad.xyz, or it's if you just search Rare Pizzas Volume One, it's on Spotify, it's on all the platforms, and it is like way better than it has any right to be. And then we also we have a house band. Um, they're called Pizza Collection. They're actually Philadelphians. I happen to have gone to school. I didn't know that she was in this band, but one of the band members, um, her her older brother's also in the band. She was uh, a year below me in high school, so in Philly. So I got introduced to them. I'm actually forgetting who introduced me, but I mean they're they're hilarious. They have like two or three hundred pizza covers of famous songs. So, yeah, and they're NFT holders. They performed at our events. Um, they are they are members of the DAO. So we we joke that they're our Pizza DAO House band. What and then other? I mean, we have so much lore that we've built up over the years. Like we, you know, we play That's Amore, the uh, the Dean Martin song at the end of every community call because uh, when the moon hits your eye like a big pizza pie, that's amore. You know. So um, there's uh. There's some, there's a lot of sauce to draw on. I mean, pizza is really a rich, you know, uh, it's a rich, a rich culture. And like pizza now, who do we follow on Twitter, right? We follow Bitcoin Pizza, this account that tweets the price of the 10,000 pizzas. We follow uh, Molto Benny, our, our mascot, the three-eyed pizza, because Molto Bene, you know, he's Molto Benny. And then we follow our NFT rare pizzas, and we follow the fourth account is Neil Stevenson. And we follow Neil Stevenson. Because Snow Crash, uh, the kind of uh, introduction of the term metaverse right, to the world, one of the primary entities in the Snow Crash future is, you know, the quote unquote, the pizza mafia and Uncle Enzo, who who kind of runs it. And, and they play a large role in the book. So that's also, you know, we really tap into that as well. I love to see the proliferation of culture. I mean, I also notice everywhere I go, I see you repping the noggles and the nouns. And there's a bunch of tangential communities that either like co-organized events or that have a lot of, uh, you know, alignment in values. So can you kind of speak on like you mentioned, like, you know, oh, <laughs> I, I have these in my pocket uh, everywhere I go. Oh, wow. Well, wow. I, I need to. Yeah, I need to get me. I need to get me a pair. Um, it'll look way better with the with the with the get up. But um, yeah, you have all these changes. You mentioned like you know, uh, crypto punks. You got the noggles, pizza dow. Like what, what, what are really communities you resonate with? And then how did was was nouns in tangent with pizza? How did that kind of evolve? So nouns. I mean, I watched nouns launch. You know, I've known four one five six from not personally. Um, I mean, we know each other, but not like super well. I don't chat with him or anything. Um. But I watched him launch Nouns. Nouns. I was really inspired by it. I thought it was super awesome. And you know, the the idea of um, Nouns DAO for me, it's kind of this meta DAO, and that was how I thought about Pizza DAO. Like we we put the word pizza in front of DAO, and then we and then we go for it. And we saw that as a model for for any community to take a word, put it in front of DAO, and, and then try and live up to the shelling point of that word, right? And what a DAO and I, and and the way I think of it is like it, you know pizza is is our boss sort of you know so what what does pizza want was always what what guided our early community um, you know what does pizza want do you think to be Ian that's that's what everyone says so like we immediately have alignment um, <laughs> so. <laughs> So, so then Pizza Dow's mission is to make sure that pizza gets eaten. And so, so that's like, that's strong alignment. Um, and I think with any DAO, maybe this is a useful question to ask. So, um, like we, you know, we've been saying, what, uh, what does a noun want? I've been saying, I think is really an interesting one. What do you think? To be used in referenced everywhere. Yeah, so it's a little it's a little trickier, I think, but but yeah, along those I say I, to mean something, which is basically what you said, to mean something is kind of what I've been pushing as the, which I think is is sort of what nouns is is accomplishing, right? Is to is to be the symbol of a certain type of collaboration, 
and of CC0. And so I, I also, I mean, I really believe in the CC0 idea. I think humans, uh, I think permissionless collaboration is, is really strong. You don't know when somebody is going to come along and have some energy to do a sprint and improve a thing. And you want to make sure that they are in a position to do that, I think. Because if everyone is in a position where they can see a thing that needs improving and then get it done, this planet is going to be way better. So that's kind of how I, you know, I that's where I want us to go as a species is to enable each other to improve our our surroundings. Because that's I think that's like one of the most fundamental pleasures of being a human is just making incremental improvements in how things are like i was i have this laundry bin and i broke the handle and then i used super glue and i used it once and it broke again and then i tried again and now it's been holding and i get so much pleasure out of using my mended laundry bin that i look at i'm like look at that super glue doing its work right now <laughs> that's that's pretty um yeah that's pretty that's pretty inspirational i I love what nouns does if if people don't know the actual like auction system that nouns has been doing i think it's like a beautiful mechanism that's been forked a lot um and just kind of like a high level overview it's essentially a regular auction that happens every day all the money goes to the treasury holders get to decide where those where that money goes and essentially creative common zero um is making it the first open source brand where people can proliferate that brand. And there's been so much culture that's actually not only been just driven by lore, but actually funded. Um, and there's been amazing initiatives. And I know like Pizza Dow has probably gotten some funding, you know, like Zora, like Super Bowl commercials. There's There's been so much and it's still going on. And there's now even like forks, like uh, Nouns Amigos and public nouns focused on public goods and people iterating on, you know, the auction original primitive. So now it's, it's, it's one of the, one of the dopest things I've seen. What's uh, what are, what are your kind of favorite uh, nouns moments? So, I mean, I, I just like when nouns now launched, I was so impressed just with, it, it was just such a perfect execution. I was just really, I was, uh, yeah, I was just happy that someone else was doing it for us, for the people. Like, you know, this is something I would have, I felt like, I felt like there was a weight off my shoulders almost, right? Like the, like, like we needed nouns down and they made it. And, and I just felt so happy that it existed. And, and then, I mean, as it's developed, like, I mean, we've worked with so many of the nounish jobs. Public nouns has supported pizza now. Now it's Amigos has supported Pizza Dow. Narsdow came to Denver and, and Vlad uh, ollied over a bunch of pizza boxes. It was hilarious. Uh, we're gonna we're we're working with Nouns Esports. We wanna bring um Smash Bros tournaments to some of our pizza parties uh, this year on May twenty second. I think it's gonna be awesome. Um and like nouns what I I guess my favorite thing is just seeing the noggles take hold. Because yeah, there you know, um, it's been a storied history, right, of nouns, and there there have been there have been disagreements in nounish communities, and there have been, and you know, people. But I just what I see is I see noggles catching hold. I see the general population within the ecosystem really getting to like noggles. Like people want to rep nouns because they like what noun stands for and i just see the, i just see it every year it is more widespread and it is like the proliferation is working it is it is like it's gonna it's gonna win in the long term like i i love watching it yeah i mean the the, the noggles is iconic it is something that can be unicoded it is something that you can add to any collection um, it's something that's open source. Like, I mean, you know, Russ, like Russ, Russ got that tatted on him recently and he don't even have a noun. <laughs> like, yeah. And it's cause it's super legit. Also, by the way, anyone watching, like these are the, are the awesome Salvino noggles. And I think you can get these for like really cheap. If you put a Weath offer in on OpenSea. Um, this is some alpha that like, I, I'm going to buy more myself. So like, just 
they're like I, I know they're so cheap. I'm about to check how much, how cheap they are these days, but they're called Nouns Visions, and they are the dopest way to wrap nouns, I think. Let's see how much. Yeah, you you guys also at the, at the latest Denver party had like the the cardboard noggles too, some 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 nouns some nouns tattoos. It was a uh, pretty it's pretty dope. And the one thing I like about Pizza Down Party is like even. If like some people say pizza is not disagreeable, and then they're like, "But I'm allergic to gluten, and I'm uh, vegan free." They have that. They always have that, and that's like one of the most I think respectable things. Cause I'm I'm like that, and uh, and yeah, Pizza Dow has all types of pizza. Like don't don't get it twisted. Like Pizza Dow got everything. Yeah, like I mean, that's the beautiful thing about pizza. You can invite everybody to the pizza party. If you're a vegan, guess what? There are vegan cheese substitutes. If you're gluten free, yeah, there there's. There's gluten-free pizza, although I think it's a little harder because there is cross-contamination for, for people who are gluten-free. So that's something that, you know, maybe will ultimately help some of our pizzerias to, to be better about that. I don't know. Um, I think the, pizza, the pizzeria industry has like a ways to go there. Uh, but but we, we do. We, we really um, we strive to be welcoming to everyone because we want everybody what's, at the pizza party. What's the noggle price by chance? You find it? Oh, yeah, they're they're. They're trading for like 0.02 weath. People are letting them go recently. Three of them sold for that, which I think is super cheap. And the floor is 0.05, but I would put in a weath offer. So 0.02 at, um, that's like what, 60 bucks? Yeah, pretty goddamn cheap. Yeah, that's pretty cheap. If you get like, if you just look up noggles right now, it's like 20, 20, 40 bucks for like some like general generic stuff. So that's, now that's just, that's just, that's a steal. Get your, Get your get your noggles. Uh, yeah, noun's per... vision. I'm I'm about to give Russ a pair. Actually, I'll just I'll just have to miracle him a pair because he deserves one. Hey, lit 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 lit. Um, yeah. Shout out to shout out to Proof of Vibes. Yeah. Um, what what uh what so it, in terms of like like coordination, it's like there's so much going on. Like, what is like what's your what's the day in the life of snacks? Like, are you are you are you like doing pizza dao full time or like what's the vibe on that? Yeah, pizza dao takes a lot of my time. I mean, I have some other initiatives that I'm working on in the back. Um, I'm also I'm, I'm moving soon. I've been renovating a house, which just takes oh my god. I I don't recommend it unless you got contractors in the uh, close friends or family. But um, a day in my life is like I have this 49 inch screen in front of me. Maybe I'll just let people see it. Um, so this is my, my daily position is in front of this screen and I have, I have discord on the left usually, and I have telegram on the right. And then I have, you know, two Chrome windows usually in the middle. Um, so I'll have four windows across and I'm just fielding messages you know, re replying to tweets, um, pushing around numbers and spreadsheets and talking to people like, you know, now it's busy season. So I'm having meetings, um, you know, pretty much from when I wake up to to when I'm going to sleep a lot of times. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll get some hours in between, but but it's it's busy season now, right? because it's March and, and May 22nd. Like it's a lot of coordination, we do that with a lot of people on the same page. So um I run Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. I run a Twitter space at uh, 9 a.m. Eastern for an hour called The Ring About Nothing, which is actually that was the name of the ring on Clubhouse that Pizza Dow spawned out of. So keeping that, that vibe going. Um, but yeah, mostly I am just, you know, besides like the normal stuff, cooking, cleaning, um, seeing, you know, my local community, my family and stuff, like, yeah, I'm spending a lot of time on Pizza Dow. Um, and it's a, it's a, it's a gift, honestly. It's, a, it's, you know, yeah. Is it hard at times? Do I get stressed out? Like, do we have catastrophes? Oh, absolutely. But um, there are moments where it just feels like it is all totally worth it. And, um, and those moments, I feel like they're happening more and more frequently lately. So I'm like, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm feeling happy about the Dow. No, nah, the Dow is beautiful. Like literally everywhere I go in the world, Pizza Dow is the most 
reliable DAO. I think it's inspired. Like what you said earlier about like having a word in front of the DAO and then really going and living up for that. Like I think Pizza DAO is inspired a lot of that. And um, yeah, like I, I mean, even like like you know me originally from Blunt DAO. I don't really talk <laughs> talk about that, but even even that in itself. Are there like other examples of maybe word based DAOs that you want to see? Maybe other food based DAOs. I heard of a ramen DAO, or <laughs> like what's if you could manifest DAOs or give props to DAOs that that you're seeing that you hope live up to the name, uh, what would they be? Oh, okay. Sorry. I got a leg spike. I was waiting. So if I could manifest a DAO, so we actually, I have tacodao.eth and tacodao.xyz and a bunch of the tacodao social assets. And we even joked on April Fool's last year that, uh, that we were switching our branding to tacodao and like soft launch tacodao. So ultimately I, I, I do want there to be a taco DAO, definitely. Um, and, and, you know, like part of our mission here, right, is, is building software for small businesses. So, so if, if we build software for pizzerias and if we build ownership and governance solutions for pizzerias and we build real estate investor syndicates for pizzerias, I think it turns out that we actually have built that for any small business um, because, you know, they're not that different. So, so ultimately, I would love to to plug in with all these other DAOs. Like Grounds DAO started recently. Um, my my buddy Oren from from Gnosis uh, is spearheading that, and I'm super excited. I don't know what what form the the DAO is going to take, but there is already a Nouns DAO um, cafe that is that is in the process of opening. Um, Drew uh, Kaufman is doing that. There's a Nouns Deli in Melbourne that my buddy Bones does. So starting to stitched together like there's a board ape board and hungry brand there are a ton of board ape brands that i think are, are kind of in the same ecosystem so um starting to stitch this network of of small business and food focused web3 ecosystem players together is is really exciting to me because i think we're going to be able to build amazing things yeah, that, that 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 makes me think is like, I mean, you guys have OG engineers within the pizza DAO community, but I haven't really seen like, um, like kind of software primitives to enable. That's actually the first time I heard like we need software to enable small businesses like very onto the ethos you were talking about earlier. And so like for you know the pizza DAO community and the devs that want to pay it forward, like what what do those primitives look like what would be maybe the first pilot initiative uh that can be done to maybe invest in a local pizzeria or um create you know this accounting and invoicing tool or maybe pass past sponsors they actually build these primitives like what do, what do you envision the rollout of the the pizza labs yeah yeah so the first part so we want to build the entire small business stack uh open source so so that means everything from you know point of sale to inventory to delivery to payroll to um you know social like website like the whole stack um and that's in practice i think that's going to be about stitching together a bunch of other project products that actually work and maybe building some bridges and building some extra stuff here and there um one of the first pro then there are a bunch of like pizza hacks, which I think are fun. And we've been talking a lot about lately just doing fun pizza focused hack projects because it turns out that you can actually swap pizza in for like any word in the context of making like a hack and it can make it kind of fun. And you're still solving like maybe a math problem, maybe a distribution or a supply chain problem, but you're just using pizza as the, um, you know, the flavor on top. Um, so I think. Like one thing we've talked about is rsv.pizza we want to make, which is just like an ordering tool where where guests can say this is the pizza I like, and then the organizer gets a feed out that says this is the pizza you should order. Although distribution at the party, I think, is its own problem there because the pizza all comes, and then we know people go crazy. They just take all the pizza. How do you make sure the person gets the pizza they ordered at the event? But, you know, something to think about. Um, payroll, though, is what I think is a really it, – it's, it's, a, it's a tractable portion of the stack that I think we can actually deliver on. We we did it for the the um, hackathon at East Denver. We actually 
we didn't get a lot of code ship, but we did the whole design. Um, and the idea is just you clock in, you get streamed USDC, you clock out, and the stream stops. Um, you know, and our pizzeria partner, um, Aaron from Williamsburg Pizza, he actually was open to, to trying it out. So I think we're going to ultimately build that. Um, you know, it's not, it's like a, you know, it's maybe a hundred thousand in dev time kind of a project, you know, whereas I think building a full point of sale, you start looking at, uh, at a it's a pretty big build, you know, um, that could be, that could be a million dollars. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I feel like a lot of primitives are there. I mean, you got streaming, you got new payment like Opolis, you got Superfluid, you got even on the, the point of sale system. I know a lot of people are working on that. I think Solana Pay does that, uh, like pretty, uh, pretty well. There's a lot of these primitives that can be stitched together, but that is just manifesting it here. I would love to see the whole pizza stack come about too. Also, I'm building a generalized purpose funding stack too for public goods as well. So a lot can be uh reuse there but no that's that would that would that would be awesome and i think um yeah even even like syndicates for pizzerias that is something i mean there are already tools that exist there's like syndicate there's enzyme for like decentralized hedge funds there's party dow have you guys like have you explored that uh so the first we're gonna do our first ones, I think, just as traditional like trad SPV type stuff. We're gonna token gate uh, participation to members of Pizza Down who have our NFT, and then they get to contribute. And we'll just limit it. You know, it'll probably be. It's not what we want to do ultimately, but we're fine for the first few. It's gonna be like a hundred limit, right? So we we we'll raise like 10k minimums, and we just buy the pizzeria with our partner. Um, and this is because currently, especially in the United States, I think it's easier in some other jurisdictions, but like it's pretty unclear what what the um, legal wrapper is that you need around around doing these. I think there's some there's some co-op law that can maybe be applied, um, you know, and, and maybe that's the direction we'll go. Or, um, but we're but we're really looking at a lot of system, a lot of different solutions. Like there's Realty.io, there's Homebase, which is a Solana product. We talked to that team. Um, so we're 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 looking at these products as they come out. I think ultimately our real estate syndicate solution is we'll, we'll probably have different partners in different regions. So like whoever is the best in class at putting uh, together tokenized real estate deals in Southeast Asia, like you know we want to work with them. Um, and same for you know everywhere else. Now we're actually looking for that. There's a whole, and I had one of the first uh, guests I had was my boy Noah. They're they're building like a an archipelago of like network states between um Token Twenty Forty Nine and then Dev Connect, like probably in Chiang Mai. But the amount that you spend like like on rent, I mean that can be used towards actually build getting like a physical place. And so that is definitely something that needs to be explored. I haven't really seen uh, that uh like taken in into into tech or, or into like a, a native um, investment vehicle so that's another thing for people to uh to, to explore you said network state but, i think we're a network state i don't think people talk no, about us as that but i do think we're a really great example of a network state i don't think many other um orgs in our ecosystem can actually make the claim maybe as strongly as we can um so i want people to recognize yeah. like look at us we're out here not Balaji, come, come, angel invest in uh these uh in 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 the like the next pizza tech because yeah you are a network. State. I mean right now in terms of the network state, what it's considered is like city DAOs. Um, like and our example, I don't think no one's really doing it too well. There's like ATX DAO, there's like community based stuff, then there is uh there's like local nodes, which is a lot like what pizza DAO does with like you have like refi DAO with green pill, but. Honestly, those aren't as strong and mission driven and as consistent as Pizza Dell. And then there's the whole, you know, Honduras, Roatan, Vitalia, pop up cities that are happening, economic zones that are forming. Um, and then there's the kind of idea like the Native American church where they're recognized by external laws. And there's kind of different variations of how it's coming. Uh, but yeah, you guys are definitely considered. Uh, you know, a, a network state. Are you coming to consensus by chance? Uh, yeah, I, I will. I will probably make. I, I know we'll have a pizza dog presence. Whether or not I go, um, 
is up in the air. And I and this isn't a competition, by the way. I just want us to get recognition as a network state. And I and all these other network states, I want them to build their network state with our frame like with our existing, you know, they are welcome to our social graph. Like please come in here and build your network state on top of the pizza DAO substrate. Like we are here. This is what we're doing. Yeah, and, and and again, it is that strategy for basically bootstrapping your your node and getting leaders together. Um, but I was I was mentioning because in, in Austin, where uh, during consensus, me and Russ are organizing a network state Austin event, and and I like I would love to catalog the 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 journeys of Pizza Dog because I do think it's part of uh, that stack. Um, but yeah, we covered so much. We're coming uh, to like well over the hour. Is there anything that you would like to say for the, the, the young kids at home that want to get involved in the space or pursue their passion? Um, yeah, we'll, yeah uh, go to your local meetup, yeah. just in general. Find your local blockchain community and go to, you know, you should be able to find it online. Go meet them um, and, and go to the Pizza Dow party. Like May 22nd, it's a Wednesday night. There's going to be a Pizza Dow event within 30 minutes of the majority of people who are listening to me right now, like anyone who listens to this podcast, there is very, very likely a pizza party you can attend. And if there isn't a pizza party that's, you know, close enough to you, that's in your city, we will fund you to throw one. We have $625 for you to spend on pizza to bring together your local crypto community. So reach out pizza underscore Dow on Twitter, global pizza party dot X, Y, Z. Let's throw a global pizza party. Awesome. This has been a phenom phenomenal time. We went over crypto history, the cultures that I love, and yeah, the future of PizzaDAO. So yeah, thank you so much for coming, Snacks. Thanks for having me.